Hi and welcome. Today I want to talk with you around intuitive movement practices and what that actually even means, uh, what my own personal movement practices look like and how I started to integrate intuitive movement into my life and lifestyle and how I integrate that with my clients as well. And I guess some of the mindset shifts that needed to take place for me to even begin to explore this way of moving my body. And so if I go back to even when I began to explore intuitive movement, it was really after my second uh, baby and when I was really finding it challenging to move my body in the ways that I was used to and in the ways that I really love. So for me, I love running, I love high intensity exercise, I love that sensation of getting a real sweat on your body, you know, pushing your body to its physical limits, uh, getting the huff and puff and all of that sort of thing. So that was not actually accessible and available for me in those earlier phases postnatally and actually for uh, quite a period of time and particularly for a period of time in my in my uh, perception. So I was really struggling with, um, you know, this is what movement is available to me, but how I would be like to be moving my body looks like this, this and this. And it was really that disconnect then between how I was able to move and how I really wanted to move. And that really felt uncomfortable for me. It felt, um, I felt really disconnected from my body, this disappointment, um, the pelvic pain that I was experiencing um, wasn't improving. I thought that I would never get back to, you know, the things that I love and enjoyed. And so I was going down this rabbit hole and spiraling into this place of feeling um, worse and worse in my body, which actually I, in hindsight and looking back, um, I believe contributed to the ongoing and the exacerbation of the pain that I was experiencing. And so as a way to heal my body, to heal a relation, my relationship with my body, um, to explore how can I actually work to heal this pelvic pain rather than it defining me and defining my life. Uh, I needed to really just surrender into where my body is at and start moving from this place and working with my body rather than uh, working against it. And that is really where the practice of intuitive movement began uh, for me. And so what even is intuitive movement? And it's actually, it's just a way of moving your body. What I, what I see is from the inside out. So actually a tuning into your body, a asking yourself or asking your body, how am I feeling? How would I, like, how, what are you asking of me? In what way would you like to feel? be moved today uh, and moving from that place rather than say looking at a gym timetable and saying oh this class is on at five o'clock this afternoon and that's what will suit me so I'll do um, you know spin on spin class on a Tuesday Wednesday it's boxer size Thursday it's deep core um, and pelvic floor class and then on Friday it's uh you know, some sort of cardio, cardio hit session. Um, so rather than looking at something externally and then moving your body um, according to a timetable, an exercise plan, a fitness regime, a um, training plan, which was what I was kind of used to, uh, then then it's more comes to a decision or a question around, okay, I'm going to sit with my body, tune into my body, ask how am I feeling, what's my energy like, um, and just start moving from this space. And so for me, that in the initial stages of my practice looked like a laying down because um, sometimes people can really get into their body in a sitting position, closing down the eyes, begin to breathe and just feel in. 
Um, for me and most of the women who I work with, they often say actually laying down um, is the better position um, for them to tune into and really feel into their body. So it was a laying down, closing down of the eyes, breathing, connecting with the breath and doing a body scan sort of from head to toe, checking in with different parts of my body and asking sort of how am I feeling, what is my energy levels like um, and how would I physically like to be moved today. And then from there, that would be the, the space to start with. And where, how you start with your movement doesn't necessarily mean that's how it ends. Uh, but so it might have started with some slow, really connected, um, you know, it might have been some sort of yoga like looking exercises or poses, um, movements. And then from there would start to then progress to looking like maybe some standing balance exercises, single leg strength exercises. And then maybe it progressed from there to um, a little bit of running drills or something for me. Um, so that's just an example of how it might progress in the one session. But it starts with the tuning in to your body and that continual checking in with our body, um, which is a very different space to work from rather than a, these are the exercises on my list that I need to do and then I'm going to go and do them. Um, and so that from there is how I started to progress into this real way of tuning into my body and then moving from that place. And as I became physically stronger, more connected and tuned, tuned into my body, it did become easier and then easier to just know, um, okay, I've got a hit of energy right now. My body wants to move. How is it going to look like? And I would just be able to go rather than a close down of the eyes, the breathing, um, the body scan and all of that sort of thing. It just become more second nature of this is how my body wants to move and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and to be honest, that's always been a little bit part of my practice of how I move my body because um, movement is in my bones and in my blood. And I have always not not just gone by a, a strict training plan, um, but say, for example, when I had um, just the, my one girl um, and I was training for my triathlon, I would look at the, this is the week's plan and this is the three hour session. This is the one hour session and this is the, um, you know, the, the long, um, hard, harder session. And I've actually only got energy to do a shorter or even just time to do a shorter session. That was always a way that I integrated into um, my workouts a little bit and my training a little bit. Uh, but this became the priority um, was the tuning into the body and connecting with the body and how is that feeling. And I think that is a really important thing with the women who um, I've experienced and work with is um, often when it comes to movement and exercise, I will have some questions around how are you moving your body, how do you like to move your body, and often how they're currently moving their body um, and what they would actually like to be doing look very different. And that's okay if we're um, using this as a base and a foundation to build to something where we would ideally like to be. But often it's not because they uh, don't have the strength, the fitness, the ability and capability. It's because uh, somewhere along the line, someone has told them or they um, maybe read something or it was a cultural thing um, that they started moving their body in a particular way, even though they don't enjoy that. And then they've continued on with that. Um, for example, um, the woman who really loved dancing has always loved dance and it was part of what she did growing up. She, if, it always felt really joyful and expressive for her. And then she, you know, she uh, grew up and started, I don't know, going, going to the gym three times a week and that was really fitting in with her job. Um, and 
I, I say, like, do you like going to them? No, no, I don't really enjoy going to the gym. But do you like dance and that kind of movement? Yes. And how would that feel to move your body in that way? Oh, it would feel amazing. Um, and what would you need to begin to do that? Oh, I would just need to to just do it. Like I wouldn't even need anything. I don't need to go to a class. I don't need to have any specific equipment or, um, you know, and it's like a, it's as simple as that sometimes of a conversation as, oh, okay, I just actually haven't even thought about how I would really like to be moving my body and what would feel like really good energetic nourishment um, and physical um, nourishment for me. And so that's part of the conversation. Um, but what I wanted to talk about too is how it's changed for me over the time. Because I am in a space now where I feel a lot stronger in my body, um, I feel uh, really connected, um, like I have a good understanding of my body um, and good communication with my body. Um, I let my body lead in terms of my movement and exercise. But what is different now is that um, I am training for triathlon and I'm starting to bring up the higher intensity Um, high-paced exercise but I still want that um, connected movement which running and um, lifting weights and swimming and cycling is for me but I I sense that there is a difference between movement as a therapy and as a healing modality and a um, movement just for the sake of moving your body and being in your body and being present with your body versus the movement that I do for um, for the love of it and for the presence and the connectedness and all of those things still, but they are working me towards a particular goal, which is um, the World Championships Triathlon. And so when when I'm now in this space, it still is a tuning in and, you know, how am I feeling and I want to go for a run and what kind of run would feel good. I'm going to do a, uh, a speed session and I want to do this and I'm going to push my body to its limits, not every time, but there are times that I'm going to push my body to its limits to increase my strength and to increase my speed and to get fitter and faster and all of those things. But... In doing that now, there is also this movement that I enjoy and I need to make conscious effort um, to actually engage with is movement for the sake of just being in my body. And this kind of movement is more what I use when it's a... What would I say? When it's a feeling of I start to get um, up in my head, start to get anxious, stressed out. Um, when I you know, feel like other things like work is bothering me or uh, you know, I just feel like there's too much going up in my head and I feel like there's too many things to do in mum life and I don't have the time and all of those sorts of things. Um, that's when I were like, okay, I want to get into a space and be in my body. So it might just be, you know, a quick breath um, and connect and tune in. But for me, for the particularly pelvic healing, um, tuning into the feminine space, um, more this for also, uh, you know, when you've got a question or you want to tap into your intuition, um, then this kind of movement is more the expressive, I see it as movement for healing, even though uh, it's kind of challenging for me to explain, but this this other kind of movement, the running and that sort of thing, is often too where I get my um, the clarity and the, um, the aha kind of moments and all of that sort of thing. Uh, but the, the more intuitive, um, tuned in, movement practice for the for the sake of simply being in your body simply being with your body and celebrating your body 
kind of looks different for me and that would be the more you know come into your quiet space perhaps take a, a particular pose um, often for me it's just a simple child pose breathing into the back body um, opening through the ribs feeling the breath feeling through the body and how does it physically feel and then how would I like to begin to move my body and just moving the body um, the important differences here is moving the body um, without an agenda um, so no goal to be had and moving the body then also in ways that might not be traditionally um, correct and um, you know when you're doing say for example some sort of um, particular yoga practice it is important to think about alignment and where are you breathing into your body and having that real um, intention behind each pose and you know, making sure your knees bent in a particular way, your arms are relaxed here but strong through here and reaching out, whatever. Um, or for, if it's example, running, we're thinking about um, it might be just going for a run or maybe you're thinking about your stride length and your cadence and your um, timing your one-minute go and then your one-minute rest and that sort of thing. Whereas this kind of intuitive movement is really just feeling into your body and moving in ways that simply feel good. And kind of like you start here, you start to move your body and then, you know, we spend time with this kind of movement and then it's, you know, the energy might shift down and like, okay, I've really started with a, I want to move my shoulders and then I want to actually know now it's moving down into my pelvis and now it wants a, a, like a, a slow pause and then it wants some more faster um, actions or whatever it is that looks like. But it's the main things is, is that there's no agenda, purpose or goal. And then that there is no right or wrong. There's no way of thinking about it. It's purely a way of expressing and feeling into your body. And this kind of movement um, is often the more challenging in the sense that it will push you to your edges, um, not physically, but more energetically and emotionally. Um, and you, for me, I can really sense the discomfort when I'm like, my body wants to move like that, but that feels really like, ooh, I, I don't know that kind of movement. No one's ever taught me how to move my body like that. Um, that does not, you know, in my mind, doesn't feel like movement that, I would enjoy um, but it's what my body is asking of me so now I have those kind of practices of yes tune in and um, use that as a way of guiding how I am going to focus my training and my more exercise and my more goal orientated movement but then I always like to go back to this place because it stretches me not physically, but more um, spiritually, if you would like to think of it like that. And this kind of movement of the connected movement, the intuitive movement, the real body-led movement, the movement that gets uncomfortable in a different way of not physically pushing your limitations, but just feels really uncomfortable in the, um, more so in, in the mind, is what I believe begins that integration, that mind-body connection uh, it also serves as a deeper level of healing when we talk about movement as a way of healing your body. And uh, for the women who I see particularly in my yoni mapping sessions, it's something that um, I'm beginning to explore even more and more in there because it's often... Um, often the women who um, are drawn to the yoni mapping therapy are women who do feel disconnected, disembodied, perhaps have um, at some point um, had somebody ap approach their, um, their body, their um, personal space um, and their boundaries. They, um, perhaps their boundaries and were don't even know what the, the word I'm trying to say was, is, um, but yeah, um, were encroached and um, they, 
it's more now than a way to connect with their body and the body to lead rather than handing over their power to somebody else and them telling them how to move their body. It's about the taking back of power in your body and your body being the one to lead and to navigate and to um, show this is the way rather than somebody else externally telling you this is how you should move your body now now put your foot here now put your foot there and put your arm here and do this Um, whilst that's all fine and a a purpose of that this just serves the um, the mind body spirit soul connection in a different way and it's it's a different way I I feel of women getting to know um, themselves and actually starting to to express their body and sometimes what comes up is a a real joy a joy of moving the body and this um, real fluidity of their movement that perhaps they've never felt before Um, it might be that some old anger comes up and a bit of rage or you know it, it can be anything that comes up so you kind of need to be prepared for those uncomfortable experiences Um, But also it's through experiencing those emotions that the the healing really does occur. So thank you for listening. Um, I invite you to practice the um, intuitive movement, the more intuitive way of moving your body. Um, Do what's right for you um, and feel into like this is what it's about is letting your body be the guide and lead you. And so if you can start to um, explore that, then you create your own way. I don't have the answers for you. You have the answers for you. And so this is just a, um, a starting point of you to go, ah, oh, that sparks my curiosity. And then when your curiosity is sparked, then you get to explore what it looks like for you and and yeah, how that feels for you in your body. Okay, see you.